ladies and gentlemen, your host, Tim Banal. No commercials, no subscriptions, no network, no rules, and at the end of the day, my friends, no comparison. Welcome back to another edition of BOA The Revival. And I'm really looking forward to tonight's show. Our guests appeared on the program back during sort of one of our weird phases where we sort of did like five episodes and stopped. And then, you know, we had these sort of stop and starts. And during that time, it was December of 21, which doesn't feel like that long ago, but really was actually quite a while ago. Um, Amanda Paulson, paranormal ponderer, researcher, investigator, and medium. And we had a super fun conversation back then. And as I was saying to Amanda, I kind of like sheepishly messaged her uh last month where i'm like i don't know if you remember me but i interviewed you because i'm like a huge fan i'm a huge fan of her videos and and just her i don't want to call it brand but her whole her whole uh her content her content it's it's awesome and it's very genuine i feel like she's like maybe i'm just not on these sites enough so it's like oh no everyone's like that but it's like feels like she's talking to you and it's like oh okay this is you know, I, I, I kind of jive with that. And, and she has all these cool ideas. And she's like, let's try this. Let's do something different. Let me, I'm, this week, I'm going to do something with this thing. I'm going to take a curse off this. So we'll get into the haunted necklace, the whole saga. Was just like, I was like riveted. And, and so I'm a huge, huge fan of, uh, of her stuff. And, and so I was like, let's get her back on with all of America. So welcome back to the show, Amanda. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you so much for having me. It has been way too long. I cannot believe it's been since 2021. That Absolutely, yeah. Mind. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, now, first things first, you just got back from the Oregon Ghost Conference uh, where you presented on the Paranormal Emotive Touchpoint. And I think this wasn't – this was this is new since we talked. Like, this is, this is something you've come up with since – we last chatted. This is, again, this is why I'm a big Amanda Paulson fan. She comes up with ideas and shit, man. She, she's like, let's try this. Here's the thing, you know, it, it, she, she comes up with cool ideas and new ways of looking at things that um, I can really appreciate and make you think. So, first of all, before we get into the Paranormal Motive Touchpoint, what was your experience at the Oregon Ghost Conference? Because I was surprised to see you posted on Twitter that you'd never been to a paranormal conference at all before. So that was like, wow, I figured, I figured for sure you, you would have gone to at least one, but, uh, so I was kind of amazed by that. So what, what, how would you, how'd you like that? <laughs> yeah, it was the first real like paranormal conference I've ever been to. I've been to, um, I've been to a strange events, um, strange escapes event once that Amy Bruni runs, but that was overseas. It was totally different. This was yeah. like a true paranormal conference. I spoke at it. Um, it went really great. Uh, I gave a lecture um, or like a presentation that I've been working on kind of since 2021 actually is when I first started sort of trying to articulate the the idea that I had and uh, I sat on it for a long time. And then I finally applied. I just sent in an application like anyone else to the uh, Oregon Ghost Conference and um, they accepted me and it was very cool. It was awesome. It was like three days long in a place called Seaside, Oregon which is on the coast of Oregon. So it's right on the beach. Um, have you ever been to the Oregon coast? No, maybe Northwest? when I was a kid. No, no. But uh, Pacific Northwest, definitely someplace I want to check out. Yeah, it's cool. And the beach has, it's kind of like going to the beach in like New England. It has like a different vibe to it. Like a, yeah. uh, the weather is a little bit different. It's not like a California beach. So, and it was right on the beach, like a right. couple blocks away. So um, the location was perfect. Uh, Everyone there was awesome, and it was just really cool to, like, get to know um, the paranormal community in my region, which I, I haven't gotten to know yet. So yeah. it was really yeah. cool. Yeah, it was awesome. I had a great experience. <laughs> I'm excited to do it again. There are already things that I'm picking apart. I'm like, I could have done this different or this different. Right, yeah, but, I know what you mean. But yeah. I needed to get the first time out of the way, and, yeah, I, I – Ask them if they would, you know, like me to come and they approved it. So it's like a lot of people who maybe are listening or who wonder how that process works for me. I like literally had to send in an application like anyone else and they had to approve it. So yeah, I'm grateful. That sounds really cool. Yeah. I, I've never been to a ghost conference. I should check one out. I've been to a bunch of different UFO, all kinds of, you know, different conferences, but, uh, I think a ghost won't be fun. I like the sort of side attractions. I think you posted a picture, like you got your aura. Taken. Yeah. 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 I got an aura photo taken, which I've been wanting to do that forever. 
And um, that was really neat. And I was like an indigo violet, primarily violet, I think, aura. I don't know anything about auras. I don't even know if I 100% believe in all of it, but I yeah. liked it. It made sense to me and it was fun. And there was like lots of stuff like that. And the cool thing about this region too, the Pacific Northwest has such a strong uh, UFO and cryptid community that yeah, like yeah. a paranormal conference kind of encompasses it all. So we had um, people there into UFOs, people into Sasquatch, like all yeah. sorts of different kinds of people. Nice. Yeah. I'd, uh, I'd, have, I'd like to check that out sometime. Um, so paranormal emotive touch point. I've, I've, I've seen the videos. I've read the blog posts. I'm vaguely kind of familiar with it. But let's sort of roll this out for the Banal of America listeners. This is your idea. Um, and it's really cool as hell. So so what what is the paranormal emotive touch point concept? Yes. Yeah, so, so the paranormal emotive touch point theory is what I would call it. Okay. Um, I theorize that there are touch points or soft spots throughout the world in which the veil to the other side is thinner and they are identified by the presence of odd emotions. And I define odd emotions as things like uh, liminality, nostalgia, deja vu, which are more occurrences too, but we kind of umbrella blanket right. term and say odd emotion, synchronicity, those kind of weird anomalous emotions that don't happen too often and feel yeah. just paranormal in nature. I theorize that if we are to pay attention to those emotions that we have in that moment, we can actually contact the other side easier, regardless of if there is a traditional haunting or actually a history of paranormal phenomena in that space. So you could be standing in the middle of an abandoned Kmart or something, and you yeah. feel you feel liminal, you feel weird. If you stop in that moment and say, you know what, I want to try to contact the spirit of my grandma right now, I theorize that you would have an easier time doing so because the veil is thinner at that moment because yeah. of the presence of this odd emotion. And so what do you recommend? Like, I, w I would like to try to put this into practice. I have actually, I haven't, I have not done so, but I have thought about it from reading and seeing your videos where I'm like, okay, so now I'm glad I got you in the show so I can figure out more about how to do that. So, so when someone experienced, like if someone's experiencing deja vu or, uh, uh, you know, synchronicity or liminality, like you said, so, but, but what's the next step? What do you do if you're in that situation? You know? Yeah. So assuming you're in a safe space, spot like not right, driving right, right. or something you stop and um and also if you had a piece of equipment on you or near you say it's happening at home that would be ideal because you can use uh itc devices things like spirit box or an obelisk something that uh gives you um like intelligent responses you're not right. you're not trying to quantify an, an anomalous like figure so you don't need like a motion sensing thing or anything like right, that right, but something right. that can give you answers is great yeah, uh, something tarot, that has feedback, yeah exactly tarot can work pendulum ouija board even i mean anything that can kind of you can communicate with but i also uh happen to use trance state and like a meditative state a lot to also try and journey subconsciously and then journal about it and really it's all about i on my website i have like a lot of suggestion questions there too but it's really about stopping and asking why is this emotion presenting itself to me? Is there any entity or thing nearby that wants to try to communicate with me? Yeah. Uh, why are you presenting yourself in this way? And what can I learn from it? And what can I do for you? Kind of things like that. Yeah, so yeah. And then you can kind of dig into it deeper there. I've done experiments in the past with investigating my own trauma too. And yeah. uh, kind, of, kind of the idea of using traditional ghost hunting methods to investigate the subconscious of the living is sort of like the realm that I exist in now. And so, so if you just kind of you utilize that uh, frame of mind where you're you're kind of contacting the other as a big like casting a wide net so to speak yeah, uh, yeah. and and trying to ask very descriptive questions and trying to get to a purpose or a point is is how I would investigate these touch points. But I also think that. Um, I'm rambling a bit. I'm really passionate no, 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 about I'm this, sorry. as you can tell. But, um, like, uh, you can also use it on investigations, too. Or say you're, you know, you're out Sasquatch hunting or whatever you're into, and you feel odd. Maybe uh, it, even right now, I'm looking out the window, and I'm looking at, like, these weird um, 
rain clouds and the sun is coming through um, like a sun shower kind of. And, and that's kind of weird. It makes me feel a little nostalgic for some reason. It just makes me yeah. feel a little odd, you know, and say you're out camping looking for Sasquatch, you feel that stop and look for Sasquatch at that moment in time. Don't go based right, off of right. the phenomena that is already happening. Use your own body and your own emotions to kind of help be a compass to that. Activity. Right, right. That makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it would sort of stand to reason, like, that, that this is, that, like you said, the thinning of the veil. It's kind of like a canary in the coal mine, for lack of a word. Like, something like, yeah. if, if, if there's something that's disturbing the the ether, you mm-hmm. know, it would send kind of maybe, like, ripple effects out where you'd first feel that, emo- those emotions first. You know what I'm yep. saying? And that's kind of probably, you know, that how you think of it, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. You you actually understand it very succinctly. Um, and that <laughs> makes me happy also to know that I'm getting to a point where I can articulate it well, too, because it's been yeah. a three-year-long journey on trying to, like, put this uh, theory to – or this idea, put it into a theory that, like, with a little bow on it that, like, kind of makes sense, you know, because it started yeah. with just, like, me being like, this is weird. There's a correlation here. I'm having more activity happen when I pay attention to me and these emotions and these things that I'm feeling. And like, I, I'm a big proponent of like um, remembering how important the human element is of paranormal phenomena in the search for the other. We can't ignore yeah. the huge part of it that we play, you know? Yeah. We're like a receiver, you know? So we definitely have a, have a role in it. So like, I'm thinking like, okay, so let's say I'm just like at the store, right? Cause you never know when these things are going to happen. That's kind of the thing with deja vu. And you know, you never know when you're going to, but like, if you get that feel, like I'm going to try this. So like, if I get that feeling rather than like start talking out loud and freak out, like the lady next to me shopping, but maybe just think to myself, like, is there someone, is there something in, within, you know, around me that's trying to make contact or would like to yeah. contact, would like to, be in contact is that kind of yeah. something that would be how to apply it absolutely you could either say you could either go about it like that to say is there anything out there who would like to contact me at this time or for some people if you had a specific spirit or somebody that you were looking to contact i yeah. I is you could do that as well but i typically take the angle that is like okay what's trying to come through right now and then you can also use if you're in a situation like that where you're truly just uh, with very little resource um to investigate it, you can also use um, things like uh, like old divination methods, where you can just say, you know, okay, what's the first thing that uh, the first thing that crosses my path? Um, you know, what meaning does it have? Say this would work more for like being outdoors. Say a, a yeah. blue jay flies by or something like that. You know, right, like right. and you you could kind of use your surroundings to try to figure out, you know, oh, uh, a woman in a red shirt walked by, and red, you know, can attribute to uh, this feeling or this archetype or this planet. I don't know. Like <laughs> I right, could go right. really uh, off the rails with that, but like um, that reminds me of this divination method. Um, Frith. I, I'm saying that wrong for sure, but it's a, it's an old Scottish divination method called free or Frith. <laughs> I don't know. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, again, I'm, sp- I'm pronouncing it terribly, but F R I T H. And that is this old Frith. divination method. Right. Frith, yeah. yeah, where they used to go, you know, you step outside and you like look through your uh, hole in your fingers or whatever, and you see uh, the first thing that comes across your vision uh, is supposed to like, you know, give you a message or or whatever. And that was used way back in the old times, so it'd be like a cow or like, <laughs> like yeah, I don't there wasn't know. much to cross your path. Yeah. So wait a minute, what do you wait? Wait a minute, you put your how do you do it? Oh, like, like that. Uh, yeah, like oh. pointer finger thumb, like a circle. Oh yeah. wow! Weird. I'm Weird. I'm not I'm by no means the uh, expert of that divination method, but <laughs> a rabbit hole that people can perhaps go down if they want to. Yeah, go down the frith rabbit hole, folks. It sounds <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. I've never heard of that. That's weird. That's just like all right. Um, <laughs> so all right, so paranormal emotive touch point, and people can find out more about that on your blog and stuff. I think it's really interesting. I'm gonna try and apply it to my life. I think people should just to, just to give it a try. Why the, why the fuck not? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I was imagining yeah. talking to you like, okay, so all right, I'm in the grocery store and I do that. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to freak out the old lady next to me. Now my mind's, my imagination's kind of, then, you know, who knows? Then she turns to me and goes, 
you look like my dead son or whatever. And then you're like, bang, there you go. Hey, that's, yeah. That's what exactly. fucking, it's all about, you know? Yes, exactly. And I also think kind of similar to the way that like, when you start paying attention to synchronicities or talking about synchronicities and how then the synchronicity storm kind of happens after that, I think the same for these emotions and things that we're talking about. Once you start kind of like putting a beacon out there, so to speak, and saying, I'm going to pay attention to this, then things yeah. kind of start to connect the dots a little bit. Right, right. Um, well, what I like about you is that you really are open to this stuff, and in, in but in a sort of like s- almost skeptically, scientifically, um, down to earthy kind of way, where it's like, okay, you're you're into this stuff, but also you 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 have your feet on the ground in a lot of ways, which I really appreciate and like. That's why, like I said, like it's, you're very genuine in your presentations and stuff. Thank you. Yeah, I think that comes from. Uh... I think I've been too grounded in the past. Like I've, I've been very skeptical of my own experiences, um, especially since I started experiencing the paranormal when I was very young and I had um, a hard childhood. I had a rough upbringing, which now as an adult tells me that some of those experiences could have potentially been um, psychological or a way for me to cope with that. And I've had to then deal with and like, try to understand what I believe to be real and what is not. And in doing that, I've, I think I've been able to find a good balance now here today where um, I'm able to explore this stuff uh, and stay grounded. But um, I, I probably, it's probably more of a challenge to me to not be so scientific quote or um, skeptical, you know, like I have yeah, to, yeah. I have I was to actually... struggle for the words there. Cause it's like, you say scientific and then people lose, you know, that <laughs> you know, like, yeah. well, <laughs> I know it is. I, we all know it's pseudoscience, but like, right. but you know, I, I had a really traditional ghost hunting um, background since 2008. And, um, and I, I had to work very hard to move out of this idea that like, I had to move away from my purpose being to quantify the paranormal and to like give it to somebody and say, look, I can prove that the paranormal exists. That's no longer what I'm doing here. I'm trying to understand how and why I interact with the other side and why other people interact with it. And what does that mean for us? Like holistically, as we move forward as, as a society, you know what I mean? Like like what really, it's kind of like, what really are we doing here? Like, what can we do with this and how can we make life better here as well as life better for whatever is on the other side as well? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, there's a human element to your work and what you're saying too is also really important because it's like, I think I've joked about this, like on the show in the past, but I mean, these, the ghost hunting thing took off like 20 years ago. So it's like, look, there's, there's no, you're never going to like convince everybody that goes to real, like in, in that mm-hmm. sense, it's like, how much more, how many EVPs do you need? Like, it has to be your own personal journey. I think the idea of like, it's cool to have a ghost hunting group and everything. That's don't get me wrong. But like, if your ghost hunting group is on the quest to prove ghosts, it's like, yeah. you're not like to who, like who the fuck <laughs> <laughs> who are you trying <laughs> to prove ghosts to? Like everybody knows what fucking ghosts are. They either believe in them or not. It's kind of yeah. like, that's so true especially now too and it's like uh i don't know and honestly a lot of people have ghost experiences like uh, everyone i meet has like some experience with a a ghost or a ufo or whatever and like i don't really think anymore i'm meeting people who are like interested in me coming to them with like a video of course would be amazing but it's not like they're like give me evidence or die like <laughs> like they're yeah, just yeah. like they're kind of like okay now what like why do you explore it why do you investigate it what are you, what are you going to do with with this i don't know wisdom or knowledge i don't know if you'd call it wisdom well i'm, fl- I'm flattering myself there but <laughs> well it's interesting you you well you did make a really wise point just now because it is like like kind of what i'm saying it's like we the quest for proof, like, put that to the side. Okay, if we accept that this is what it is, like, how can we work with this? How can we use this uh, to better ourselves here, you know, and, and maybe help whoever's on the other side? So it, there is, like, mm-hmm. something to it. Like, the, the quest for proof is kind of, it's titillating, but at the same time, I think once you've kind of gotten a really good EVP, you're probably like, how many more do you need? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It kind of makes me think too a lot. Like, I mean, obviously that this is, I'm going to regret saying this, but like, um, it makes me think of like the UIP disclosures and it's like, obviously we all have opinions about that, but like they, 
at this point, people could all but say like, here, aliens are absolutely real. But then it's right. like, that wasn't enough for people. People are like, okay, <laughs> whatever, yeah, whatever yeah. you know, like now what? <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I'm trying to answer the this call from within. That's like, I need more. I need a deeper experience or understanding of this. And I think that that's being reflected at least in my spaces and like my communities. So yeah. uh, that's kind of like where I'm trying to exist now. Now, when we talked a few years ago, uh, the documentary was about to come out. Now the documentary's been out. Um, I think you called it a cursed documentary in one of the things. Um, so <laughs> how, did, how did all that go? Is everything good with the documentary? So the documentary death is, is not, with me. Is, death oh, is with me is not out yet. Oh no! I, I know. Had a premiere wasn't there a premiere and there was a ghostly experience at the at the theater. Okay. Y- yes. Yeah. So we had we had three premier- premieres in 2023. We had one in my um, hometown of Spokane, Washington. We had one a uh, big one in Seattle, Washington, and then we had one in uh, Santa Ana, Cal- Southern California. Yeah. And um, these premieres did awesome movie super well well received had a lot of weird stuff happen surrounding these premieres especially the seattle premiere like just tragedy and weirdness and like the block the whole every block around the theater before it started was shut down because there was like some atrocity that had happened um (laughs) i know and and like everyone had to be rerouted and and then like i had I could not get my, for the Spokane premiere, I had issues with the um, file and, and all of this stuff. And I was like, this documentary is cursed. I mean, and since the filming even, which I won't get too much into that, I still want to not spoil it because it will right, come out eventually. Right. But um, but yeah, I did start kind of calling it cursed online and uh, I stand by that. And it's still not out. Um, they're trying to I don't have anything to do with like the distribution of it, but um, from what I understand, the people who helped make the movie are trying to get the best kind of yeah, distribution deal. outcome, yeah, yeah, as possible. So I thought it was going to come out a lot earlier um, because I I thought we were going to take a different route with it and kind of put it on YouTube or put it on Tubi or something like that. And they decided right. to go a different direction with it, which is great because it's a really good movie and it's really um, a great quality of film. So. Yeah, but I mean, I do think it is cursed. <laughs> I think it's cursed. I don't, and I still, I, I'm, I've yet to find out if it's like cursed if you watch it or not, because we only have three premiere premieres worth of people watching it. I think all those people are fine and safe, but there's something <laughs> weird. There's something weird to it, like when it plays, wherever it plays, it's like, I don't know, it's got, it's got some weirdness to it, like The Ring or something. <laughs> yeah, weird. Now yeah. I really want to see it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to work, we'll, we'll work. I only went like about as far back as like a year on your videos. Cause I didn't want to also throw like something at you where it's like, what about this thing you did like in 2022? So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, 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 so we'll kind of go backwards here on some of these videos. I love them. I'm telling you, I really enjoy watching them. Uh, they're just so much fun. So you had a ghost sighting. Uh, this was in February. You, you were like shaken and when you did the video, you're like, look, uh, I saw a ghost and, it was, you said like, oh, it's kind of like, I don't see ghosts very often. Like, if you're really yeah. into this stuff, you're going to haunted locations all the time. But, but yeah. this was like, this sounded like, well, look, it's one thing when you're you're the one looking for the ghosts, right? It's another mm-hmm. thing when the fucking ghost is looking for you. And that's yep. that's kind of the impression I got. So talk about this ghost experience, let's say, uh, that you had like like last month. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's exactly that. It's one thing when you're looking for the ghost and you have control over the environment. And then another thing when you're trying to go to bed and a ghost comes to visit you. And um, I told this story online. I'll say it again. I was trying to go to bed and some people will say, well, you were dreaming or it was a sleep paralysis or whatever. Yeah, right. I know the difference. I've had a lot of sleep hallucinations. I've had a lot of weird sleep things over the years. And there is a difference you you just know and right. what had happened was that um i looked down at my feet at the feet of the bed and there was a woman uh crawling up from um Ooh. beyond like uh what like not behind uh underneath god <laughs> underneath right. my bed at the at the foot of the bed crawling up Jesus. the mattress and grabbed my foot and i could like see her hands and what and that's one thing so i i freaked out i panicked i i uh, sat back and i like woke my boyfriend up to like because i was scared and he gets up and i look at him and i look back down and it's still there 
and oh. he had not like come to yet but he yeah. i looked down and i'm like looking right at this woman and i can see details on her face she's dark hair um she had scratches on her face like little oh, God. little lacerations or whatever and um and then I looked back at him and then like, and then it was done and we were both like right. lucid and he like did a check around the room to make sure no one out actually was right. there like a real person. And then, um, and then I found out later on, I didn't tell this story on this part online, but I found out later on that I had had like weird nightmares the rest of the night. Like he kept being woken up by me, like screaming in the middle of the night. And I don't remember any of that at all, but I was oh, probably God. still really scared. And what's interesting about this, situation is that at the same that same night i had gone to pick up some uh dried herbs from a friend um like uh rabbit's tobacco was one of them and then like rue it was like she was like uh she knew i had some haunted objects and she wanted to kind of help me with that and she had these dried herbs that were local and i'd been meaning to pick these up from her for uh, like five months like i had like not done this for so long and I finally go and do it. I bring those herbs back home, which are specifically meant to, quote, exercise spirits from yeah. locations or from people. I have those herbs in my office, and then that's the night I see the spirit. And it really felt like oh, wow. it, it really felt like it was something – like, I don't know – who it was or what it was attached to because at this point i have so many objects in my yeah that's what's gonna I, ask you yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I there's really no way i mean i could really dig into it but i didn't i don't know what it, it's attached to but i feel like it was like no don't let me go you know or don't get yeah. rid of me that, that's what it felt it was so coincidental with like the timing of that and those herbs being in my house and i don't normally mess with herbs i like that like i don't want to exercise spirits out of my right, house right. I, I want them to hang out with me so it felt like she was like no, I don't want to go because of the like desperation of like reaching up for me. It scared me. Uh, and no, I don't have that happen very often at all. Um, not like that. And I'm yeah, not like, yeah. I, I have, I, you know, I do these channel drawings now online and I, I can channel things. I, I have my own gifts, but I've never claimed to be like the type of medium that can like call on the other side and right. just like immediately see them and i like don't see ghosts in the way that some people say that they can see ghosts like yeah it's more of a visceral experience for me and so then when i do have ex the rare experience like that i'm like that's a real ghost thing that's something that could, yeah like, yeah like it just felt like very like it is what it is you know but yeah you it, was, can't really... it was cool though yeah i liked yeah. it though <laughs> We, we must have been scared when it first happened, though. I mean, I would have been like, what the fuck Absolutely. is... Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I cried after. I, I was so oh, wow. scared. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, I cry when I'm scared. But I, uh, after I saw it the second time, then I just stopped and, like, put my hands in, in uh, over my yeah. face and just cried. Because I'm like... Jeez. It's just shocking. And it's, like, weird, too, because then being a paranormal investigator after the fact you i get this weird guilt where i'm like i should have been more brave i should have been yeah i could and, see that yeah yeah second guessing it. yeah 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 and i was like damn like who do i think i am like i want to do this and then it <laughs> comes to me and i'm like no <laughs> but i i whatever <laughs> you know i try my best like and hey, um, that's on the ghost dude that's just on the ghost like look lady, yeah. if you want to talk like <laughs> maybe if don't crawl, crawl up from under yeah. my fucking bed exactly like don't come to me looking like you're coming out of <laughs> the tv on the ring like it, it was yeah. so scary yeah so um but i forgive them i think they're still here i feel like but i don't know i don't know i was like i won't get rid of you i promise i felt so i felt like so bad afterwards i'm like i didn't bring those herbs into my house to so, like cleanse all the spirits out of my house i would be so bored right. if i did that and so lonely yeah. but i'm not doing that uh another one of the videos that kind of made me like just made me wonder and again it's like it, it, you brought up something that i hadn't really thought of was this is you went to like the thrift store and there were these two pictures like sister pictures and you're like i don't know if you if you predicted someone would buy one or something but someone got one and you're like that's a recipe for fucking disaster probably because <laughs> Uh, you just separated the two pictures. I, yeah. To me, it was like, I don't know. Like, that would be really a cool thing to do, you know? Like, uh, if you ever yes. run into that again, I'll volunteer. I'll I'll take the one of the sister pictures. You mail it out to me, and then we'll see what <laughs> what. Absolutely. What if, if I had access to, like, two, the two pictures, I think that that would be a really cool 
like experiment in a controlled environment where the two yeah. will come back together eventually. Yeah, we but... can put them back together. So it's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, if if, every, if all hell breaks loose, we'll just be like, "Fuck, dude, I mailed this back out to you. We gotta, we gotta get these <laughs> things back together fast." Yeah, yeah, exactly. I wish that 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 could be the case with these, but uh, you'll see. I think you can kind of see behind me. That's the that's the picture. What? I can't point. It's right there. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you got, you, you got the, the, the remaining the one. one. Yeah, I got yeah. the remaining one. So what happened was, um, so I posted like a super short video online of the two photos that I happened to have gotten a video of. And then, um, and then the next day I went back and one was gone. And what was... Uh, hold on. Funny. You're breaking You're breaking up a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you have to adjust your mic or something or... It is literally like thunderstorming outside, and then the sun's just coming through right here, and it's like really windy over here, so I don't know. I live in a really old mansion um, that has kind of terrible service, so I'm so sorry. All right. No, no, no. It's starting to clear up now, so yeah. Okay, it's, cool. Yeah. Maybe it was the maybe it was. It's the all this talk of ghosts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Who knows? That's weird. I haven't. Well, I haven't told this story on a podcast yet, so I mean, it's very possible it could be paranormal, but. Um, what I was going to say is I just happened to get the first video of the two, uh, portraits together because I was taking a video of my time in the, in the antique store. I was going to, uh, make like a compilation, like a little reel that was like trying to see like if something taunted in the, yeah, I don't know. Like I was just like filming and I was drawn to these portraits, but, um, but I genuinely just like filmed them like on a whim and then. I went back the next day to that antique store to actually go with my boyfriend because I had seen um, a small little McDonald's uh, toy that I thought he would want. So we went back <laughs> to go get this stupid nugget. Uh, it's like a chicken nugget car. <laughs> and then when I went to go find the chicken nugget car, which was by the portraits, I noticed that one portrait was gone and I stopped dead in my tracks. And I was like, you're kidding me. Did somebody really buy one of these portraits? Yeah. I, like, they were just here yesterday in the middle of the day. So then I went to the uh, store employee who was the same lady from the previous day. And I was like, did somebody buy that portrait? And she said, yes. Like we tried to convince them not to take just one and to take both. And, and we told them that that's such a bad idea and they didn't listen to us and they wanted to buy one and not the other. I know. And I was just like, and then online, the video got a whole slew of interesting comments. A lot of people thought I lied or made up the story or whatever. Why would you, um, God. I don't know. Would, I, I think it was just a case of like too, cr- like it wasn't that crazy, for, but yeah. yeah, it was like, it was just kind of crazy. And it was like sort of weird. I was like, that's insane. And even the, one of the store employees, when I was talking to them the second day, they were like, Oh my God, you got a picture of the both of them. I'm like, yeah, I got a video yeah, yeah. of it. I just yeah, happened I that, to yeah. like be drawn to it. So yeah. And then, um, and then I went back a full week later I gave it a week for the initial, the original buyer to go back and buy the second one because I thought yeah. maybe they would change their mind. I went back; they hadn't bought it, so I bought it and right. I took it home. And I don't know oh. if it's haunted. I haven't like, I mean, the whole thing initially was never that it was like inherently haunted, but I was like, I feel like that's a recipe for a haunting to separate these two portraits of yeah. what, were clear, what were clearly twins too, and um. And at first I was like, okay, sisters, some people thought maybe it was the same girl, just different years apart. And I'm like, absolutely not. That doesn't make any sense at all. (laughs) It's like same outfit and everything. And then somebody commented on the first video and said they have twins and that they know that like these certain features, like a dimpled chin and like a certain kind of ear is like common in, uh, in fraternal twins or whatever. And it just seemed and then the store employee too was like, "Oh, they were definitely twins." And so to separate those two photos, I was like, "Ugh." It's very awesome. odd. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I, yeah. I feel like they should have been sold together, honestly. But I don't want to shit on the seller. Yeah, I don't no. know who the seller is, you know, like because they're booths, so it could be yeah. anybody. And um, and but I mean, they should have sold them together, like with no exception. But they sold them for uh, $40 each. So I could see how, if you wanted one frame, you would like, yeah. Buy, buy one. It. Yeah. 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 You don't but even, I'm like, yeah, people. Yeah. Yeah. Still. So <laughs> some people, I'm sure whoever bought it just didn't even cross their mind. They were just like, this is a nice frame. I'm going to get it. I'm like, do I need two of them? Nah, I'm good. I just need the one. 
Yeah, you know? exactly. And, and never they never probably... thought about the people in the picture because they're like, I know. I'm dumb throwing the picture out. I'm putting yeah. you know, my cat's I thought picture of... in there. Yeah, I thought about that. And I'm like, if they threw it away, why not just like take the photo out and leave it with the seller booth, yeah. like with the other photo? I don't right. know. It just seems weird. But then I also got a bunch of comments that were like, why do you care about um, pictures of strangers? And I was like, fair question, but I I don't know. It just seems like the right. It was What's sad. wrong? It sounds, yeah, that's so. It that, sounds what, sad. It, like yeah, <laughs> I don't see nothing wrong with that. It's like a, yeah, because they're fucking people. Because they're yeah. people, dude. Like because yeah. they're human fucking beings. Like why yeah. would you? How about caring about people? Like let's yeah. try that. Yeah, Jesus exactly. Christ. I was like, I can't imagine if like me and my two sisters like had these photos taken and somebody took one and then took the other and then took the other and we were separated for like eternity. <laughs> I don't know, it just seemed wrong. But yeah, that was a wild drive. Definitely a reminder of like the downfalls of um short form video and social media and like not being able to give people one hundred percent context before you post something. Cause yeah. uh, and then and then, you know, and then it pulls up people's heartstrings too. So it creates this like kind of snowball of um, interaction in the comment thread. And, and that one was one that really got to me just because of the people being like, you're lying. And I'm like, you know, I don't care if you say that they're not, it's not haunted or I don't care if you don't believe in ghosts. You can tell me I'm a nut, like a nut for all I care. But when people start, you know, telling me that I'm lying or like attacking my character and as a paranormal person, somebody into the paranormal, I need to be trustworthy. That's like what I've built my entire uh, online presence on yeah. is like the fact that I'm authentic and trustworthy. So I'm like, don't tell me I'm a liar. I would never do that, right. especially with something Why would you so make that? stupid. Yeah. yeah. Like I, yeah. <laughs> I would never, but uh, yeah. Anyway, that was a wild ride that I haven't, uh, I haven't posted anything on Instagram since that, since I bought this, uh, since I bought the portrait and, um, and I don't know why I was like, I'm just going to let it sit and like marinate for a little bit. I needed a little break after, after those ones because yeah. I was like, and I wanted to kind of see my apartment had gotten really full of a lot of stuff and a lot of energy. And I needed to kind of like weed through it and focus on the Oregon Ghost Conference and stuff. And so now yeah. I'm just like a day into getting back at it and probably investigating that portrait soon if I can. Yeah, because what you do in some of the videos is you take the different items that you think might have attachments or energy, let's say, um, and you put them up with the ghost equipment and try to and see what develops, essentially. Yeah, yeah, and that's like a newer um, – it's not a new thing that I've been doing. It's some I've always had, like, little haunted trinkets and different things yeah. in, in my office here. Um, and sometimes I try to investigate them or whatever. But end of last year, like November of last year, I just started being like, let's see what happens. And I also right. have an ov- I have an obelisk now, which an obelisk has this word bank in it. And it like makes interacting uh, very interesting, I think, because it's giving you like fully formed word um, to, to go off of. So I started experimenting with that device and the different things in my office to try to start kind of researching what energy is coming from what and um and like had some very surprising um revelations about like some different things like a a gift my mom gave me like a necklace my mom gave me and then um a book i had thrifted a long time ago and all of this different stuff yeah yeah yeah, it's been really interesting and i think it's a good way to to stay actively investigating the paranormal while not having to shell out an absurd amount of money to go to a location or anything. Right. You know? Well, to me, I think it's, I find it really interesting and really unique and a lot more refreshing than fucking like the 80th time you see someone like going into a house. Cause it's like, this is super, it's like DIY ghost hunting in a way. It's really, <laughs> it's really cool stuff. I really, I really enjoy when you do that. Uh, you did one. Yeah. You said you had like a little book. That mm-hmm. was like called ghosts, and it was like a century old or some shit. And, and yeah. Like you, and so this machine, this obelisk, is that what it's called? It, it just is like I, a thing that has called, a bunch of words. <laughs> yeah, it's called obelisk. So it's O V I L U S obelisk. Oh. And uh, the obelisk first came out years ago. Uh, the most popular model was the obelisk three, um, which is, you'll see in like early ghost hunting shows. Um, and then production of the obelisk 
five stopped for a long time. This piece of equipment was like impossible to come by. The older models sold for a bunch of money on eBay if, yeah. if they were even there. And um, and so it was hard to come by. And then uh, the, the maker of it started reproducing them with Ghost Stop again uh, just last year. And so I snagged one of the first drop because this was like my um, – all time like bucket list piece of equipment and and these days i'm not so much into the equipment as i used to be right right um not i don't rely so much on it but this piece of equipment it has a lot of different functions in it so it has a word bank with like a thousand words in it or whatever um and it just kind of says the word so it's very clear unlike a spirit box where you know it requires a level of like meditation and like kind of going into it um to to hear the words the obelisk just says a word from the word bank and then it has a bunch of other features on there too which are cool but um it's not always accurate i mean a lot of people are like it just goes off like whenever because it's reading environmental fluctuations and yeah yeah, like it it going off is not the weird thing it's the it's what it's saying and how you relate it yeah Yeah. and it's like how (laughs) how um relevant is it to like what you're asking or what the situation is so so yeah like if you ask for a name and it says a name that's interesting because it's not it's not smart enough it's not like our phones it's not hearing us but it's just right um, right. yeah it's just reacting to like fluctuations of like if i drop it it'll go off or if i blow into it into the top it'll go off so it's like reading that kind of fluctuation but yeah that's cool. I should check that out. I don't really do ghost hunts, but like as I, we've been seeing with what you're talking about, it's like you could just do stuff at home with it. it sounds cool. Yeah. Um, the haunted necklace. As I said, uh, I was deeply invested in the saga of the haunted necklace. Again, it's like you you just come up with these ideas. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh no, man, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> you're like, yeah. You're, uh, the, uh, you can get into the story, but it's like you find you you hear about a haunted necklace uh we'll get into like the haunt of the curse all that you buy it and you start you're like let's just i'm gonna wear it for a week and see what happens it's like oh my god dude this is <laughs> this is some next level stuff so so take people through this story a little bit yeah so this antique store which is the same antique store that i was just yeah, talking about right. with the portrait yeah um i've been going to this store for a while and so they had my phone number um, to be able to text me if they, um, actually, no, I'm going on a different tangent about a different thing right now. There are so many haunted necklaces and things that I own. I'm (laughs) getting them confused. I like that you're, I like that. I didn't know that part. I like that you're like, they they have a hotline essentially. (laughs) Yeah. That, that happened, that happened after this necklace that you're talking about. So I'm like jumping forward two steps. So scratch that, reverse it. Um, so this haunted locket. I, again, this antique store, I am familiar with it. My coworker happened to go to this antique store one day. Um, I work in social media, uh, like a marketing agency, and she had to go take some content. And I, and she was going to this neighborhood and I said, hey, stop by my favorite antique store. I love it. They have weird stuff. They're super cool. I've never found a haunted object at this antique store ever in my life. Um, but I happen to tell her, you know, hey, go check it out. When she's there, my coworker finds a uh, locket, or it's not really a locket. It's um, a brooch or something, right? No, it's a brooch, like uh, yeah, it, it's like what do you call it? a pendant? It's a pendant. Yeah. Um, it's a pendant, and it has like it was advertised as a morning brooch, but it, it's actually incorrect. It, I don't think it was a morning brooch. I don't know that there's hair in it. It kind of looks like milkweed or maybe animal hair, but um, it had a paranormal disclosure on it. It said, "Warning: This object is." known to be haunted by the original owner, blah, blah, blah. Apparently this, um, and so my coworker sent it to me knowing what I do. She's like, oh my God, there's a haunted object here. You should come check it out. And so I go check it out. And apparently the booth um, owner, it was like her friend who had owned it and it was haunted and the friend wanted to get rid of it. And so the the seller said, okay, I'll sell it for you in my booth um, because they didn't even want it in their house anymore. And so, it was expensive, I will admit, uh, because it was advertised as a morning brooch. Um, and morning brooches, for listeners, if you don't know, 
typically have human hair there to mourn the death right. of somebody. Yeah, it's um, not like I, for you first said that I had to do some quick math in my head where I'm like, does she mean mourning in the morning or does she mean like mourning M O U R N I N T? And when I mean, you mentioned hair and shit, I'm like, ah, oh. uh, yeah. yeah, mourning like uh, yeah, gr- grieving or whatever. But okay. um, and I'm not into that. I'm honest to God, like not into collecting like Victorian era uh, jewelry, especially, but or mourning. Stuff. Yeah, stuff like, like I, that. that's like not really my thing like i honestly my aesthetic and like the stuff i like to collect is more um trinkety and like kind of just random weird creepy yeah. shit like i just like collecting things people don't want is kind of my angle and <laughs> um and so this i was like god damn it i want it like i want to test it out i want to see if it's actually as haunted as these people are saying um and i can't imagine anyone else in this town having it but me so i was right. like give it to me. I want it. Um, so I bought it and, uh, and I wore it for a week to try to see what would happen. And, um, the stuff with that necklace was weird because it didn't manifest in like a traditional way. Like it wasn't like footsteps in my house and, you know, there's a ghost wandering around now. Uh, but while I was wearing it, it, (laughs) if anyone's seen Harry Potter, it was very much, uh, like a horcrux. Like I didn't want to take it off. Um, yeah, I, you mentioned that. That's the one thing I put in my notes about this. You said you had a persistent feeling that you should never take it off, which is like <laughs> that's fucking creepy. Yeah, like, it like felt. Be, yeah, <laughs> it felt like the way it landed on my neck too, and it was only the pendant. It did not come with the chain. I used a brand new silver chain that I had had never opened before, um, and the way it felt uh, like while I was wearing it was like very comfortable, and I never noticed it was on me, and I never wanted to take it off. I was only taking it off right before I fell asleep and then I'd put it on my bedstand and then I'd put it on right when I came uh when I woke up and it wasn't until like day five that I started realizing that that was kind of weird because I'm not a jewelry wearer and I was like why do I keep like it was almost like a superstition had injected itself in my brain yeah. like, I, I have to wear it every day like I cannot I I can't skip a day <laughs> it's just weird and um and I was feeling very um the best way to describe it would be like having really bad sleep all week and like being super out of it and loopy and yeah. brain foggy zoning out. I was trying to film videos of it and I would just kind of like black out for a second and zone out. Yeah. And I was just like feeling off all week. Um, kind of bad luck vibes. Like it was just yucky. And, uh, and so I was like, I'm done. And I, I still don't know exactly what that origin of that is which is a bummer because had I had it my way and had all the time in the world, I would have stopped and like taken it off and then investigated it with my equipment and made some notes and yeah. meditated with it. But I had to go to Pennsylvania uh, and film a documentary like very soon after I took off this necklace. And suddenly yeah. I was extremely scared that I was going to get in like a plane crash or something. Like I was yeah. like, why did I do this right before a trip? I'm like, I cannot get on a plane all the way across the country right after wearing a cursed necklace. What was I thinking? And I, yeah, started, yeah. I started like truly panicking. No, and, I uh, could, I could see myself in that same. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. I just started <laughs> spiraling mentally and I was like, okay. And then I'm like, is this part of it? Cause I've never been quite like that, like that bad. Right. And um, so then I like contained it and I, I did a little, I put it on a little thing and like surrounded it. And I was like, whatever you're contained. And then that didn't work felt like I had, I had, I won't get into it, but the time filming this documentary was truly a fucking strange time. It was so weird and not, uh, some of it was very unsavory and just like, and so then I come back and I'm like, God damn it. I think this pen is still doing something. And then that's how I go and get the herbs for my friend Ah. lead to yada, 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 and so on and so forth. And I'm like, so, and that was, that would have happened all at the end of January. And, um, and then I like, oh, and I, I, my friend sent me some holy water. I just was like all over the place. I, yeah. like, this thing has like five different religions <laughs> imparted onto <laughs> it. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know what's happening anymore, but I'm pretty sure I've, I've all but cleansed the shit out of it. Like it, yeah. it's just a pendant now, but actually, but I don't know for sure because I haven't worn it yet because it's still sitting over on my table. Just, yeah. Like, might just want to leave well enough alone. Yeah. Yeah, and then I went and got an I went and got another piece of jewelry uh, that is not advertised as haunted, but was actually a piece of morning jewelry 
that they texted me about and they were like we think you would like this girl they who bought the, the really yeah. yeah they're like girl who bought the really expensive haunted brooch you weirdo come and get this other thing <laughs> <laughs> like and I'm like okay I'm like maybe I won't buy it and then I did buy it but I stand by you know I I don't have unlimited funds by any means but I love to put uh what money I can back into what I share online uh, yeah. And and also to I consider it research and and money well spent because um, I think it's important to like examine these things like instead of just being like oh somebody said that that's haunted and I'm never gonna touch it and I'm scared of it now and like right and now, yeah and yeah and now I'm gonna impart my own judgments and bias on it as well and then now we have no idea what's going on with it it could be like the most cursed thing on the planet and like I'm like stop let's actually explore what's going on with this thing. Um, let's push it to the limit and see like what, I mean, let's see what like spirit energy or human energy is truly capable of. Like, can it really haunt an object to the degree that these people are claiming? Uh, that's not to say I'm skeptical of, or like, don't, don't believe these people that they're having these experiences. Right. But you want to know how it manifests, right? That's kind of the idea. It's like, okay, you say this is haunted. Well, let's see. What does that mean? Like, yeah. you know, so and yeah, you, and like, you try it. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's like, and do, and does that, do those manifestations really follow the object or was it more about you, the person in the first right. place? You know, did it, did, I, I don't know. Like, did it stay with you? I just want to know more about that. And I love, exactly. I love the, the concept of haunted objects for that reason. Although again, I would not consider haunted objects like my one and only thing. I definitely, um, and more about like I would do that with like any scenario. I would be looking at it from this lens and trying to approach it like this. But haunted objects right now are just something I'm um, doing because I, I'm I filled my That's office with them. That's yeah, and it's super interesting and it's fun. Yeah. And it was and it was winter and it's been winter time too. So it's like right. that's perfect. I'm inside. I'm not yeah, out no, in the forest. Yeah. Yeah. You know I'm a fan. So you know, yeah. You know, so. Now have you? You're very perceptive about sort of, um, like, if I needed someone, if I was like, I need to get an idea what the hell sort of the the zeitgeist of the ghost hunting community is, like, I would turn to you because you seem to have your finger on the pulse of that, your tremendous perception on that. What I was interested in, this kind of popped into my head earlier tonight as I put together the notes, we talked about the equipment and everything. Have you, has anyone... Uh, are they doing anything? And I'm not a huge AI guy. I don't use it. I don't really know anything about it. Um, you know, I feel like I have to hurry up and figure it out because, like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's everywhere now. Um, but has anyone sort of tried to apply this into the ghost hunting realm? With AI? Yeah. 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 Um, so there is actually an um, an app out right now. And apps are very controversial. And I'm not even a huge proponent of ghost hunting apps, if I'm yeah. being honest. But um, but there's this uh, ghost tube. A lot of people will be familiar with ghost tube. But ghost tube came out with an app called ghost tube seer. And seer does use AI generated um, imagery. It basically yeah. you scan you like, put your camera on through the app. And you scan an area and then it starts to manifest an AI generated image based on what it's looking at. And the con- the idea is that um, it could pick up like right, spirits right. Or, or whatever. Like I yeah. did that. I, I used that app at um, the Spokane premiere of my documentary and, um, and it, it had like a weird, it had some weird stuff. I yeah. don't know. I, I think it still um, has some, work like i i wouldn't right, trust right. it as like being exact doing exactly what it promises to do but um yeah, but yeah. I, it's a, yeah i'm just kind of yeah I don't, like i said i don't even know how you would apply ai to the ghost hunting but it seems like there must be some you know way i think yeah and i know i feel like I, i'm trying to rack my brain right now but i feel like i saw somebody talking about ai generated images uh, used in ghost hunting on, on Twitter X or whatever now, but, but yeah, that's the only area that I've seen it in is that ghost tube seer app. And I think it's really fascinating and I can see it. I can see AI being utilized in some capacity in the future. And what I about, think that people, I can't, I can't, so I, I mean, interrupt you, but I'm going to no, lose that's this okay. plot. So <laughs> if I forget this, then I'll, that's okay, then I'll be go. So what if you took, this is like an experiment now, take 
with the, the ovalis or whatever, it, so it mm-hmm. generates a bunch of words. Then maybe you take those words and you plug them into the chat GPT or whatever, and you'd be like, what is the significance of this cluster of words? And you put it, and then maybe just see what it says then. I don't know. That might be a way yeah. to use it. That would be cool. And I do want to use like, so I use chat GPT uh, at work in my job. Uh, we use it for proofing and for like spell grammar and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. Um, but I've experimented a little bit with like its capacities just being like, who's who's the best uh, paranormal investigator uh, named <laughs> Freddie Evans Spooky? I don't know. Like I've just like kind of tried to see right. how much it knows because I don't really understand the, yeah. I don't understand the technology of it. And like it kind of feels a bit like a like a search function right now, at least Chat GPT in particular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it talks to you, and that's the like I don't know the AI of it all, but like um, it like is searching through the internet and just kind of coming up with things that it can yeah. find based on your question. But it might be interesting to put in like a string of words. Like you said, that would be really. Actually, I'm probably going to do this. <laughs> I'm going to say like yes, this do. actually does I, I sound wanna, interesting. I want to know what it says. Yeah, because maybe that could help us in the search for like the context of what it's saying. Because maybe the author right. says says um, river, uh, British Isles, um, some some. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know what that means. But if the I put AI it in the chat, be able to make those connections. Yeah. Yeah, so that actually might end up helping more on the research end of things. Like not so much from like a like a psychic kind of woo-woo perspective, but like the, it would right. cut out a lot of that research in a way. I am going to experiment with that. That is a great idea. Thank you for Thank that. You. Well, I just came up with it while we were talking. So, uh because I was like, well, how how could you? And then I'm like, well, what if she has those words? So I'm thinking like the um oh, I forget his name now, but he has like the cipher, you know, the cipher mm-hmm. um shit. Yes, I know what you're talking about. Yes, uh, I agree. Oh, my God. <laughs> now that's going to bug me. The, yeah. c- the cipher of the, the Euphonaut cipher? Yeah, yeah, secret cipher uh, of the Secret Euphonauts. cipher of the Euphonauts. What the hell is his name, though? <laughs> his name is escaping me right now. Let me look it up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to go. Oh, fuck it. Of Euphonauts. Let's see. Alan Greenfield. Alan oh, Greenfield. God damn it. Oh, yes, yeah. I know. I, that's, what, uh, that's weird. Because, uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, so, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. That's kind of what I'm like, oh, it's like secret cipher of the Euphonauts. Maybe if you plug this into some, into the AI, maybe that would somehow, I'd be interested. I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on it. I hope you, uh, I hope you do that. Because I don't even know how to use, like, I hear about this chat GPT. I don't even know, I, I don't even know how to get on it. So that's how I don't it's, touch I am. <laughs> you can do it. I, I encourage you to try it. It's, it, it is interesting. You just go to chat, G- it's like, You'd have to Google it to go to the right site because the um, the website itself is like chatgpt.ai. Something I don't know, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's cool and it's free. There's a free version of it, and it just opens up a chat box, and you can just say, "Hey there, I'm always nice to right. the AI." FYI, I don't. I feel like we need to be yeah. nice to them, <laughs> to the AI, so that in case they ever, you know, come back, so they um, remember you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, oh, you were but always it, nice, so you're cool. Yeah, instead yeah. of demanding information from them. But, yeah, I use, I use that. Um, some people hate it, but I, I do use it to proof stuff at work, and it's really Yeah, helpful. it's very polarizing, but, yeah. Yeah. It, like, I, we, we, it comes up every now and again on the show, and it's just like, we're going to look so quaint, like, just in five years, like the shit we're talking about now, where we're going to be like, mm-hmm. you know, like, if you were listening to the radio, like, they show those old clips, like the Today Show, where they're like, email? Yeah. How does that work? It's like, um, <laughs> yeah. um so, so speaking of your perception of the paranormal community, you're sort of like you got your finger on the pulse of the scene, if you will. I, I really liked your paranormal predictions for the new year. Um, I just thought they were very interesting. Are they sort of just your, just kind of like, just your gut sense of, of you know, what people might trends. It was really kind of trend, like what trends might unfold. It was interesting. Yeah. Uh, that was like a really fun video, um, videos to make and they didn't like perform like exceptionally well, but the feedback on them from people that are more into the field are like, is really fascinating because, um, I've already seen a couple things kind of, um, start coming up, which is interesting, but those were like genuinely, I was kind of coming at it from like a strategist point of view of like how I'm observing the field and the directions I'm seeing people's thought processes going. Um, so it wasn't like psychic. It was more like, I, I like literally think that this is like the direction people are headed. Um, 
but um yeah like particularly about like uh, i think i said like hypnosis and also timeline discussion yes, I, I, think I have were... it here so I, I, I'll, I'll, I can refresh you as we get into it but yeah i'll try that was the one that really intrigued me a lot was the alternative what do you mean by alternative timelines um there's been whispers of it and it's, it's something i've thought about myself too but the idea that um that we're not always speaking to the spirit of deceased people but instead to other people on another timeline that oh, like could potentially be ghost hunting us and like thinking they're talking to a ghost i don't know I, there's a lot of different directions you can go with that but i think what i'm mostly getting at with that one is that i think people again are going to want to start looking further and deeper into this paranormal phenomena that we're experiencing and i yeah. you know, i think it falls flat when you end just at we're talking to a dead person we're talking right, to somebody right. who passed away because some of the things that especially with the um with the popularity of the Estes method and uh, with things like the spirit box and the obelisk, it's like the things that we're coming in contact with often are feel like so much more intelligent than just somebody who would have passed away a hundred years ago. Right, like right. It, it doesn't really make sense. And I just think that people are going to start digging into those concepts more. Um, same with hypnosis, like trying to play around with your own um, state of like your own mental state or, or yeah. whatever. Um, I think that that's where it's going to go. And I've already heard some people mention it on Twitter now, um, not not because of my video, but just right, naturally right. seeing it you come up. And I'm like, it, yeah, yeah it, it just makes sense. I just think people need more lately in the par yeah. especially after paranormal social media has blown up and inflated to the degree that it has today. It It's going to it's going to deflate soon. And then people yeah. are going to be like, what? what next you know and that's kind of like where i was coming up with that prediction list too it's like kind of thinking of like we never really thought to think what's next in the paranormal yeah well Nobody what do you mean stops. that what do you mean that it's blown up because like i i kind of just kind of hang in my little tiny little bubble <laughs> and niche so is it you mean like the tiktok realm and and that kind of thing yeah tiktok and and youtube and kind of this like new found like like the paranormal social media celebrity and like the level of which people are performing um i use the word performing but you know like going on investigations for yeah. content and especially since tiktok and youtube have monetized things there is kind of now and it's always been around i understand that you know paranormal tv they were making money and, and right right and entertaining celebrity that way at one point and now it's just um channeled into social media but there is so much more money happening and so much more like control over the content that these um influencers or content creators are making that it's like in the paranormal realm it's become just kind of outrageous and they're always trying to one-up themselves they're always trying to go right crazier and crazier and it's like this is a this the most demonic thing we've ever found it's like at what oh point okay cap, all right at what I point do you saying. cap out on the way that you're performing this for the public i will like i just keep thinking like there has to be a moment where they they're like we can't go any further with the same narrative that we've been perpetuating with like the demonic, demonic uh, angle like we have to okay. think differently eventually so I, I meant a lot of things, I guess, when I said that about the inflation of like, because I'm not, I'm in there too. Like I, I'm, I wouldn't say that I'm like above or beyond like social media content creators. Yeah. That's like literally what I do. Um, but I just think specifically with like really sensationalized paranormal YouTube content and yeah. TikTok content, I just think that um, it can't always be this is the craziest demon we've ever seen. Eventually, you're going to have to start thinking outside of that box and looking for the next thing that people will be interested in. And I think it's going to look like it's going to get a little weirder. You know, <laughs> like I, yeah, I think yeah. I think we've outdone the demon thing a, a bit. And I think I th I wonder too if more paranormal people you're going to start seeing them go more into like the ufo realm a little bit and like they like the i yeah, don't know I like that. i wonder like, so i see so what you're saying essentially because like i don't follow i don't watch these um this content i guess um but what you're saying is sort of like i can see how this has happened so it's like the people back in the day, I was like an old head now on this. It was like the old thing was like, I'm going to get a TV show, right? Everybody fucking wanted to get a TV show. And now it's like, you don't need 
to get the TV show. Like, you can just be the TV show yourself on TikTok and YouTube, and it's kind of like, it's getting a little crazy, is what you're saying, which makes sense, because it's like, there's no filter of, <laughs> it's, yeah. like, it's like your own, it's like the person's own idea of, like, what they're going to do. And as you said, it's commodified, so it's incentivized to to get crazy, like, you know, to mm-hmm. draw more people in. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not even necessarily saying I have an opinion on that. Like from a business standpoint, I, I'm right, like, right. lip sealed. I don't care what you're doing, but like, yeah, yeah. but like from, from the perspective of somebody who believes in paranormal phenomena, that it is possible. I think that, that the way that they're conflating these experiences with ghosts or with demons or whatever, it's like, I just, it has to cap out somewhere like yeah. or else you're or else you're what levitating into the air like i, yeah, I don't know right, what is right. next you're getting possessed like it it truly we've reached like the most crazy i see exactly what you're saying yeah 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 it's almost like yeah. the ufo thing where it's like they keep they're getting closer and closer and it's like look you gotta gotta bust out the alien soon or fucking i'm out yep. of here it's kind of yep. you know exactly so, yeah 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 so so I just think people will start thinking a little differently about it soon and being more open to making content about those different thought processes, like alternate timelines or, or, uh, you know, what we can do in, in hypnosis or yeah. whatever. And like, yeah, I think that that's coming. I, I think it's already here a little bit, but I think it's going to come in the next like five years. Now you say rise in femininity, move away from tactical. So is this tactical gear? So is the ghost hunting still kind of bro centric? Uh, as it, as I remember it, <laughs> yeah, like paranormal TV still is very bro centric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, ghost uh, not ghost hunters, ghost adventures is still ruling the landscape. I'd say, although people are a little more um, willing to like criticize them now than they used to be. But um, but even in YouTube and on YouTube and stuff like that, you kind of see this like overly. Um, aggressive approach. Yeah, I can kind of see. Yeah, yeah. And and so and the femininity aspect of it, I just think like I'm seeing a lot more women be comfortable wearing whatever the hell they want versus yeah. feeling like you have to put on the the cargo pants and the you know and tie your belt tight and put on yeah, your backpack yeah. and stuff. Like I think it's yeah, more yeah. about like just having an experience and you don't need to be like boots on the ground crawling right, through right. A, a cave or something but <laughs> yeah it's like you don't literally have to have boots on the ground it's kind of yeah <laughs> yeah like i'm i and i'm really just like i'm like dude if if we're gonna say that all of this stuff is real which i believe it is then why are we why are we giving so many rules to it why does it have yeah. to be in an abandoned hospital in at 3 a.m and that's the only time you're going you know yeah like, yeah exactly yeah yeah Talking about that with john tanny once it's like you can hunt ghosts in the daytime right like that's, that's <laughs> yeah allowed. i don't I don't think they have any rules. I mean, yeah. and if they do, we don't know them because we're not dead. So right. <laughs> and anyone who says they know the rules of dead people are lying probably, but. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, no, I totally see where you're coming from. It's the whole, the, the whole like hunting, it's already kind of in, baked in, like in, in, in a way it's like the ghost hunting is, it's aggressive. There's an aggressiveness to it. That's like, no, nah, man, you should just be like paranormal investigation. Obviously, that's cool. It's like, mm-hmm. but the hunting part is kind of like, oh, maybe we're already going into this with the wrong, <laughs> with the wrong. Yeah, mental or like state here. exactly, or maybe there are instances where that mental space is necessary, but I don't think that there should be like, it's not just across the board. Yeah, always yeah, be exactly. like this. Like, yeah. be a human. Just like you're suspecting these ghosts were once human. Like, right, just, right, yeah. 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 <laughs> Use some discernment on, like, the situation at hand. You don't need to go in with tactical gear to someone, some poor person's, like, residence in town that's scared <laughs> shitless because yeah, yeah. their grandma's haunting them. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah. whatever. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Hans Holzer, you give him a shout-out in the predictions. You think that he's sort <laughs> of uh, <laughs> the next big thing. Um, <laughs> I, I haven't not been right on that one yet, <laughs> but I don't know. I just kind of, I was like, okay, the Warrens we've, I've seen all but everyone move away from the Warrens. I'd say right. there's a very small amount of people that are really concentrated in new England who still feel very strongly yeah, about the Warrens, <laughs> yeah. but, but 
uh, as far as pop culture goes, um, I'm like, okay, who is somebody that has? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, because they're gonna run yeah. out of like Warren books. Yeah, so, so <laughs> yeah, they have to expand yeah, like, the universe. Uh, to, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, Holzer has a huge uh, body of work behind him, and already has that TV show Holzer Files. Like that already existed, and like I don't know. I think I think if like TikTok was to catch on to some Holzer Files type of stuff then like people would start garnering some interest there but i thought recently i was like you know what i don't know <laughs> i don't know about that i don't think i don't think people really give a shit about holzer hands holzer, holzer anymore and like oh, no. I and i think now it's like and now maybe it's going to be more modern people that people are looking at like um God, John Tenney or whoever—I don't know. Yeah, like, no, I yeah. can't—I can't help but wonder. Well, I was—I was talking to uh, Alex Matsuo last night. We were both uh, marveling over Rosemary Ellen Guiley. Like, yeah. people should, you know, dig into Rosemary Ellen Guiley. She's—you—you uh, you be I would, never run out of stuff to read. Yeah, I would love to see more people uh, explore the different uh, women in the that have been in the field or have been doing work or like. All, I mean, there's tons of people that are better i think than holzer but i just think it like makes sense it's just in terms of pop culture again in right no of, like, i know exactly what you mean yeah i can see yeah. like i said like like if they're going to expand the universe of, yeah. of, of the conjuring i think they actually call it the conjuring universe now or like yeah. so i can yeah. see them being like okay we is there any case where, where they cross paths so we can spin him off into a yeah a, a separate <laughs> vehicle so yeah. absolutely and traditional equipment do people still do table the table tapping anymore like i'd like to see that make a comeback you know like, uh, the, like the spiritualism yeah. all that weird, no i know exactly yeah. what you mean i was just trying to think i think i want to say greg and dana newkirk just bought one i think they posted ah. about it recently it makes sense oh, nice. with them but um but like i've never seen anything i've never seen Table I'd like to see in it real. in action. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah I've yeah. never seen it in real life, like genuinely happening. Um, I would love to, but I like, and that's another thing too is like <laughs> some of these. I'm like, well, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I need to need to go forward with confidence in these predictions. But <laughs> I thought I thought maybe people would get burnt out on on the equipment. Um, and then, yeah. well, I will say to my point. Ghost Stop, the company equipment company, did come out with a candle recently that is like an EMF detector, and it goes on and off with energy. Oh, it looks, but it looks like a candle, and okay. so I was like, I'm kind of onto something in that. Like, people want that sort of authentic, like, um, yeah. more old school feel. But um, like, I I can kind of see people like moving back to like dowsing rods, pendulums, Ouija yeah, boards. Yeah. Like, I'm surprised people have been like kind of quiet on on that front a lot lately um it's just been so hyper focused on the spirit box uh recently in in different spaces but um but i don't know and then i also say that i think that they should make a blanket of uh yeah i was trying to figure out what you meant by that like what is this blanket let me explain it to you it's in my head i just feel like if i'm having this idea somebody else already smarter than me has had this idea and knows how to make it but like i can see like being able to blanket an entire bottom floor of a house in motion detecting lights so that okay. they can so it's instead like a layer, of like yes, a layer in, of motion detection. Yeah, because like right now in a house you would you would use a, a couple pieces of equipment that could hypothetically detect footsteps in one yeah. area or you would use um, a trip wire which like can kind of it's like a wire and you know you can see things moving down it. But how do we how do we look at an entire space and like and detect movement in the space yeah. on like a, a wider scale? And I think that you could make like a big blanket type of situation with the tripwire technology. I just I could see that happening. I bet it would be really expensive, but <laughs> almost like um, <laughs> it's kind of giving like like uh, gosh, it's making me think of like old tech tech movies where it's like they have all the wires everywhere yeah, and you have yeah. to like avoid the, crossing the wires or whatever like i feel like why are we using that technology like sometimes i think that we just haven't gone that far with equipment yet because a part of us is afraid or knows that it might not work and like yeah. you might still you might still hear a footstep or feel a footstep and not catch it on this thing that supposedly made it impossible for you not to right, right. and and i don't think i think we should like 
that's why I'm just kind of moving away from like that proving that ghosts exist. Thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Cause like, you know, like I trust people's like honest, genuine people. I trust their experiences. And if you thought somebody was walking around the house, but the equipment didn't catch it, then maybe, maybe the equipment can't catch it. I don't know. Right, like, exactly. yeah. I'm not here to, to make the rules. So if we can just think outside of the box more often, I think we'd have better experiences, but. Well, I think that's part of it. I think that, Kind of like what I was saying about the hunting part. It was like you're just if you just go for the experience, then maybe you'll you know have better luck or something. You know, yeah. But to find to find what you're looking for, if you're not looking for proof either, if you're like, look, I heard this place is haunted. Kind of like like what like what you did with the necklace, where it's like, okay, I heard this place is haunted. I'm gonna go there and just see how it it might manifest because they mm-hmm. say it's haunted. You know, and it's like, I'm not going to go looking for anything. I'm just going to hang out there and yeah. see if it'll manifest for me. You know? Yeah. And I've had some of the most incredible experiences in those moments where I'm just existing in that space. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. There's something to that. But then, then again, it circles back around to um, content and the, the right, nature exactly. of it all. And that the fact that that doesn't make good content. And so that's <laughs> yeah. been... That's been a challenge for me, but a fun one in that I, I still very much exist in this, you know, content creator um, space where I'm ex- yeah. kind of expected to have this like entertainment value to what I'm presenting. Right. Online. Yes, exactly. But, but I'm doing all of this kind of more heady sort of like, but it's what you feel and it's like, uh, Esoteric. Yeah. yeah, it's like, it's how I feel about it. And it's like, how do I represent that on camera? And that challenge is, is very fun and fulfilling for me and, and always a challenge every day. So nice. I appreciate it. Let's talk about the clown hotel. You uh, were on a uh, talk about bucket list uh, things. I, I Clown hotel is definitely a place I've wanted to see for a very long time. So I was very jealous. So what's it like at the clown hotel? I didn't stay overnight, so okay. I should say that. I, I did get to stay at the Mitzvah Hotel, which is okay. in Tonopah and is very haunted. Um, but the Club Motel was weird, man. It was super weird. Um, the gift shop where all the infamous clowns, clown artifacts are, was a lot, a lot smaller than I expected it to be, but just as creepy. Yeah. Um, they apparently have new owners, I hear. Um, I wouldn't have known cause I'd never been. And then the shining star of the clown motel is absolutely the cemetery that is right next to it. Um, yeah. and I, I spent hours in that cemetery, but actually right outside of the clown motel, um, I posted about this, but somebody yelled at me. And, yes. Uh, <laughs> it's like, it was at the beginning of the video. I watched it tonight. Yeah. It's like, you're, you're just kind of, just as you start the video, someone yells, no one cares. <laughs> And, and then at the bottom of you, but like, actually, I care. And it was just yeah. like, yeah, that was a great moment. I actually rewound that a couple of times. I'm like, wait a minute, did that fucking, did, did, was someone yelling at her from, from driving by? It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You can see the truck for a split second in that clip. You can see the truck that's yelling at me. And I will tell you, it took me like a good amount of time to not be upset about it. I mean, I, I genuinely was like super upset about it. I was so embarrassed. I'd be and I did rattled, that. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, well, I was alone too, and that oh, whole trip, yeah, yeah. that whole trip, I I tra- I went on a five day road trip through Nevada all by myself, and oh, wow. and it's nerve wracking to film yourself in front of people. I mean, it's hard to yeah. stick a tripod up and like film yourself in front of people. It feels silly, um, but I was there to do a job, and um, and I just thought that that was so funny. No one cares because I'm sure they see people at the Club Motel all the time taking oh, photos sure. and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, whatever. Like, I care. I w- it was a bucket list place for me, too. Like, I was so stoked on it. And um, it makes for great pictures. It's super cool. But the cemetery next door to it was really, really cool and odd. And I think haunted. Yeah. And I, I think you mentioned, like, the guy is somehow related to the Clown Motel. Like, the guy who's buried there is, like, the, I don't know, the father of the old, old previous owner, I guess. Or something crazy like that. Isn't it something like that? So, or, or maybe it's not. something... It's something like that, but I honestly don't remember. I yeah. I don't know like the deep like history on that oh, area. Uh, no. <laughs> well, and I didn't get to spend the night there, so I didn't really dig into it because I was more right, focused on, on the mitzvah. Um, but there there was like a YouTuber from 
overseas I was there at the same time I was which was really interesting and I'm sure he knows more about it than I do but yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah there's there's something there's some kind of story there but the um Lots are, are really old and super cool. And I got that cemetery and another cemetery in Nevada briefly confused and thought they were the same. The one with the library paste eater, the man who died from eating library paste is a super oh, wow. famous, famous tombstone um, that is in a different cemetery that is like not too far away. Um, but anyway, I that that trip to Nevada that was with um, a company called Travel Nevada's the um, Division of Tourism for the state of Nevada. Oh, wow. Yeah, That's so awesome I, oh, it was awesome. It was a dream, honestly, and um, and I'm extremely grateful for it. And they sent me on this five day paranormal road trip because they have a paranormal passport um, that you can like check off uh, bucket list oh, wow. like places cool. and stuff. And Nevada is, I, I was like shocked. I knew about Nevada, and there was a bunch of places I wanted to go. But when you put into um, when you put it in a list of the like haunted places and all of the UFO places, like it's incredible. I'm like Nevada is my new favorite state. If it wasn't so hot and dry, but like it's you so should cool. uh, you should get in touch with the with the state of Kentucky because uh, they just they they have a whole tourism campaign centered around the paranormal. You should be like, hey, see what I did for Nevada? I'll, I'll come down and do a road trip Kentucky style. So yeah, do check they? it out. Yeah, I yeah. am going to check that out. And Kentucky is cool. I've only ever been to Waverly Hills in Kentucky, but I immediately vibed with Kentucky. Uh, I love, I love it over there in general. That whole area. But yeah, I'm a big West Virginia fan. I don't know something about it. So, uh, yeah, some of these obscure sort of they seem obscure to us, I guess. But <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> really, co- I really... <laughs> we're coastal. We're coastal folks. Yeah, so, you know. yeah, true. <laughs> I, I'm a huge fan of uh, North Carolina too. I think North Carolina is oh, very nice. weird. Yeah, I think that it's cool. I think there's a lot more to explore there, but uh, but also my home state of Montana is uh, there's been a lot of UFO sightings out there, a lot of weird stuff, a lot of ghosts. No oh, Sasquatch though, I don't think in Montana. Not Probably maybe, very maybe, rarely. Very yeah, rarely. Like one, yeah. yeah, you know, and then well, just one, but, just one of yeah. them, or maybe yeah. he just visit, he vacations there. Passing somehow. through, yeah, yeah, Came down from Canada, <laughs> yeah. So let me see. We're we're getting you going to the movies soon. So we got a <laughs> what movie are you going to see? Uh, Late Night with the Devil. It's not like a horror film. I take it then. Yeah, you should look into it. It looks really good. It it's like uh got a seventies. It's like in the seventies, and it looks like it. Oh, and okay. It's, it's right. very cool. It's all over Twitter. I'm surprised you haven't seen it. If you're because no. that's your main platform. Do you call yeah, it yeah. X? Do you call no. it X now? No, no you call I just it call it Twitter. I really want to yeah. leave there. Because uh, it's so bad, but it's like I was saying to someone on the show way at the beginning of the year, we were talking about it because like the paranormal park's kind of pretty well self-contained and they're doing all right, and the rest of the place mm-hmm. is like on fire around us, <laughs> and it's like you don't want to. It's like a. It's like you're at a good party. It be, it's like you're at a shitty party. Excuse me, you're, you're a shitty party with a group of good friends, and you're like, well, let's get the fuck out of here, but no one can agree where to go. So you're just like, fucking, let's just stay here. Like, this party fucking sucks, but, like, you want to go get pizza, and I want to go to another bar, and she wants to go home, and somebody else wants to do this, and it's like, let's just fucking, we'll just stay here, you know? Yeah. For a little while while longer, till till something, you know, yeah. That seems to be the vibe, yeah. That's very accurate, yeah. Twitter is not my main platform, but... I will say, a little insider info for any listeners, is that's where the real conversation is happening, I feel like, in the paranormal spaces and, like, UFO space. I don't know, UFO. I'm barely, I'm barely on the peripheral of, like, UFO discussions. But, right, right. Uh, but, like, the paranormal, like, I go to Twitter and see, like, the paranormal people chatting it up. Yeah, it's still it, largely, like, text-based where... yeah. And, like, actually talking about things versus, like, on these other platforms, it's per- more performative for right. an audience, so you can't and really get into it. And yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's partially why I don't, like, I, I, part of me is like, I should be on this TikTok thing, but then it's like, but then you have comments from <laughs> it's like, I can't deal with that. Yeah. I, yeah. Hard. So, do you... Uh, are you working on a book? That's sort of the, always the question that, uh, comes up. No, no, I i have been told. I, I, I don't have a book either. So yeah. Yeah. Same here, same here. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's a matter of, 
time and resource and like I just feel I have this feeling right now that I can't get started on it yet. I don't know why, yeah. but I just feel like something's going to happen soon where I'm I'm going to be busy or something, but maybe one day. I don't know. Yeah. I want, I've kind of, I want more I've been experience that way forever. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I want like I want to have a little more uh to my book yet you know like yeah. i don't have i don't know what to write yet so like we're yeah. getting we're giving it time <laughs> i'm of the same mindset because we're not like i think you're the same way in a sense where it's like some people just get something in their head like and then they're 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 the smoky mountain bigfoot guy you know yes it's like all right that's your thing you're smoky mountain bigfoot and and you wrote the book on it and it's like yeah. all right yeah I, that, nothing's ever grabbed my passion no. like that, where i'm like i've got to i've got to document this 1935 ufo case in the grand canyon like i need to I, this has to be a book yeah i know i maybe perhaps to my detriment but i i really struggle with like pinning myself down like that and being like yeah. i'm the i'm the guy who talks about this like it's right, it's right. It, it's honestly incredible that i've gotten to the point i have with the auto emotions and the paranormal emotive touch point because i've been like this is something i want to focus on but it's also something that was burst out of my brain and I feel very passionate yeah. about versus me being like, I want to be the Olympic Peninsula, uh, Bigfoot. Yes. Girl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be tied down in that way. I just, I'm just like having a ball right now and like just doing weird shit and like trying to experience and like take in as much as I can. Like that is. Yeah, no, I can right totally. Now. That's why I'm a huge fan because you're doing stuff. You're just doing stuff. Like that's the that's the cool that's the cool part. Yeah, it's like this, this necklace is haunted. All right, fine. I'm gonna let's see let's see how fucking haunted it is. It's like oh Jesus, this is this is. Crazy. And then I'm like, eh. <laughs> like I'm like it's too haunted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you think that lady, the ghost, was related to the to the locket at all, or because you said you got the herbs? Yeah. I wonder. I wonder too. You know, my best guess is maybe. Yeah, I do kind of think it, it's related to that necklace. But also, the necklace never felt like it was like a an actual ghost like that either. Though it just felt like gunk, like energy. Uh, so I don't know. But like, also, I'm like, what if it's like, I don't know, like. What if I, what if my apartment was a haunted all this time and I didn't even know? <laughs> and this ghost was yeah. like, wait, wait, I'm here. Like, I don't know. Yes, yeah, like, hey, um, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, she's like, don't get rid of me. What the hell? But um, now I want to. I don't want to put you on the spot here. I want to ask you about this because uh, I, I, you'd been on the list for Banal America for a while to come back, and um, I was like, well, the psychic channel drawings. I'm like, if we, because we don't have, we don't do the video yet, and so I'm like. If we ever get around to the video, I want to get Amanda Paulson on. I'll have her do this psychic channel drawing. I'll pay for it, obviously. So, but that, like, I'm not like, <laughs> I'm not like, hey, hey, can you cater my kid, my kid's t-ball game, uh, <laughs> local pizzeria? So, <laughs> so, so uh, if, if you would be down for that sometime in the future, tell people what these are because I'm doing another show sometime in the future. Uh, would call banal origins with ancestry dna oh, i don't cool. know why i held that up they're not paying me for that but uh <laughs> but, so i'm like oh so if i that would be kind of an interesting we'll do a bunch of different weird kind of like <laughs> like dig into the psyche of banal and the geology and shit so it'd be funny um uh-oh she's muted uh-oh i can hear you can you hear me through that the was so weird my microphone and, and my headphones just did the weirdest shit i've ever heard them do i've had these headphones forever and it was like weird <laughs> was what, well you've been as the listeners will attest you've crackled on a few occasions there's been a few like one minute long you know short stretches like that i'm like ah I'm just letting this kind of this goes away so we'll see so weird i don't know maybe yeah, they died on you I don't know. I have, I don't know. I'm going to blame it on the ghost just so I don't have to blame it on my internet connection. I pay a lot of money for like <laughs> Did you? I, all right. I, so anyway, I got two things and I'm going to go because I okay. remember this other thing. So anyway, yeah. So tell what are these psychic channel drawings people can get through your site? Yeah. So I do what I call psychic channel drawings. I go into a trance state and journey through the subconscious of the living. That's how I explain it. Yeah. Um, but what I'm doing essentially is entering a state of trance 
with a um, with drawing materials, and I am blindly drawing what I'm seeing as I journey through the subconscious of the person I'm reading and try yeah. to pull out any messages that they that they need. So it's very similar to like a tarot reading or something like that. Less similar to less similar to mediumship in that I'm not actively trying to contact a spirit or a deceased loved one, but I'm just trying to see where I journey uh, in trance. So I, I'm, you know, all in my head, I'm trying to see where I journey and kind of what message I can pull out of it while right. also blindly drawing it. Yes, so that yeah. Can, yeah. So that I can kind of have something tangible for people to have, but it also allows me to look into my drawing further, which ends up a bunch of scribbles yeah. and see what images come through the drawing as well. So it's kind of like a double layer of being able to channel um, and, and give someone a message from their subconscious or from the other side yeah. or wherever it comes from. But sometimes people uh, have spirits come through these drawings. Um, and, and when it has happened, it's been really, um, really interesting and really crazy. Um, but it's not guaranteed. Sometimes it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, I, I'm being taken to the bank. You have no money. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, it, it just depends on, like, where uh, – why have I talked about being broke a lot? I, I'm – you know what? Money's on the brain right now, and I'm sorry. I just noticed I've been mentioning it a lot because I had my car broke I didn't notice you down. mentioned it much at all. I just noticed <laughs> it. It was, like, the third or fourth time. It's because my car broke down over the weekend, and I wow. – uh, it was very expensive. It's on anyway. your mind, yeah. Yeah, it's on – see, that's what my subconscious would be telling me if I was doing a drawing about it there right now. Go. but. But um, but it's really cool. And I, I've in the past, I've been able to contact, you know, one time I saw um, my barista, I was doing it for her. And I, um, I saw her braiding a woman's hair in her kitchen. And I said, it was very significant. I watched you braiding this hair. Um, and then and then a young girl came and whatever. Well, it turns out that week, the barista had found a braid of her sister's hair in a bag. Her sister had actually passed away uh, oh, wow. the previous year. And the funeral director had given the braid of hair to uh, the the barista and she had lost it and she had just found it that week so wow. that was like her sister coming forward and saying hey what's up and then there was like a further message about you know she was dating some guy and not to not to be with the guy anyway needless wow. to say needless to say these channel drawings go in all different directions and you end up with a really cool um drawing at the end of it that i i color and i often like um you know i find faces and different imagery in them and they're, yeah. they're really cool and it's something that i uh i just started offering to the public in um i think it november yeah. um but yeah there's yeah like i said when i saw it i'm like oh, i want one of those and then i'm yeah. like well we'll tie it into banal of america when we get the video going but that'd be sick sure. i'd be super down yeah yeah that'd be fun all right and the website is pretty and spooky.com it is pretty and spooky.com and I'm pretty up and spooky on all social media platforms as well. Yeah. And she just put on the TikTok on the LinkedIn or whatever the fuck it's called. My link my LinkedIn was apparently <laughs> not updated and Banal let me know <laughs> immediately. There you go. Yeah, because I'm like, I gotta Google it. Pretty up and spooky is the website. Folks, as you can tell, I'm a huge fan. I really enjoy what Amanda's doing. It's it's I mean this in the nice it's off the wall. It's like, that's to me, you know, that's a cooler way of saying it's outside the box, man. It's it's off the wall. She really comes up with some really unique ways to look at this stuff and, and investigate it and and try and draw insights out of it. And and I, I'm a huge fan. So you'll be back on the show in the future and hopefully, uh, hopefully you do more of these ghost things and maybe we can cross paths somewhere uh, in this great country of ours. <laughs> hopefully, yes. Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed being here again.